Elemental, from Disney and Pixar, is a movie set in Element City, where inhabitants of fire, water, earth, and air coexist. In any Pixar film, it is very common to see many images that seem hidden or not very clear, which have a lot of significance for the movie and for other films in this Pixar world. Today I'm going to tell you about some curiosities, but there is one that has many people worried because they say it can be misinterpreted by the way it is presented. But you are the ones who will decide if the image is significant or not. So today I'm going to tell you about the most surprising curiosities of Elemental. Periodic Schedule The inspiration for Elemental came from Peterson's experiences growing up in New York. An important thing about living in New York is knowing the subway system. It can be a bit confusing, but it helps when the diagram is color-coded. The subway schedule of the Element City adopts a colorful approach, but it is not the only unique touch. The rows and columns of the chart are arranged to resemble the periodic table. Ember's father's voice. Bob Peterson voiced Roz in Monsters Inc. and dug in up. Thirsty Bird. The late Joe Ranft voiced Heimlich in A Bug's Life and Wheezy in Toy Story 2. In addition to co-writing Inside Out, Ronnie Del Carmen voiced Windstar in Soul. The Good Element. In the same theater where Partly Cloudy is shown, you'll notice another familiar title where it says Elemental. Another poster announces a movie titled The Good Element. This pays homage to Peterson's first film, The Good Dinosaur. As different as they may seem on the surface, Peterson's two features share quite a bit in common. Both deal with the forces of nature, with Elemental taking a more literal approach. Both films also focus on characters working to overcome prejudice and coexist. A language of ice and fire. Upon arriving in the city of the elements, Ember's parents stand out in the crowd. This is not only due to their physical appearances, but also to language barriers. While everyone else speaks English, Mr. and Mrs. Lumen speak a fiery language. To make this world feel more authentic, the filmmakers turn to renowned conlanger David J. Peterson, who has created languages for projects like Dune, The Hundred, and Raya and the Last Dragon. Peterson is best known for his work on Game of Thrones, where he devised the Dothraki and High Valyrian languages, among others. At one point, the Elemental team used fire sound effects as a means of communication. Ultimately, the sounds would inspire Peterson as he crafted a native fire language known as Fire-ish. Blue Flame Souvenir Elemental is another Pixar film that accurately represents Asia. This hot streak started with Domi Shi's short, Bao, so it's fitting that Elemental introduces a reference to that Oscar-winning short. The blue flame is a sacred symbol that connects the Lumens with their homeland, but that doesn't mean they can't commercialize it. On the Lumen family store counter, there's a display of blue flame souvenirs. The small ornaments resemble Bayo's sensitive bun, although in a bluer tone. In addition to celebrating Asian culture, Elemental and Bao explore how children relate to parents while trying to make their own way. Both films also show how food brings families together. Element Presentation In the Garden District we see the metro sign as o Fei. those are the chemical symbols of gold and iron. In Element City, it reads A-H-A-L or A followed by H. Atomic number 1 hydrogen and then aluminum, atomic number 13, so you get A113, and the hidden detail is that this is the classroom number at Cal Arts where numerous animators took their first steps. For the Fire City, the symbols are S and C, the chemical symbols of sulfur and carbon elements associated with fire and burning. Ralph's Cafe we mentioned some businesses that make up the City of the Elements, but Ralph's Cafe is likely to resonate more with animation fans. The name pays homage to Ralph Eggleston, the art director of films like Finding Nemo and Wall-E. Eggleston also directed the short, For the Birds, which Elemental references with some bird-like characters. Additionally, Ralph's Cafe is a nod to Ralph's Coffee, a real-life coffee chain owned by Ralph Lauren. Here we see the word Trioda, which of course is related to the famous car brand called Toyota.
We notice that on the desk there is a globe where most of this world is green and blue, but it has huge polar ice caps because abundant plant life means fewer carbon emissions and low global temperatures, and mainly because there aren't a lot of fire people in this world. Everyone is clustered on the southern continent that represents the homeland of fire. When this globe is in Wade's face, you can see that this fire continent would fit perfectly into a lake we see within the green continent, showing that these societies truly belong to each other. Amber pushes a sign and we can clearly see how the word, ouch, is focused. The Cyclone Stadium is designed to look like a giant tornado. Inside there is a sign that says, Flagstone, and a strike from Cars, a tire company that sponsors these racers. Also on the scoreboard one of the scores is for passing gasoline. When they take the hot air balloon over the city, the light from the canvas fins makes a flower and this is related to Ember's last wish. In this movie, you can witness the rare flower of the Vivisteria. Ember tells him that Central Garden Station was flooded so he missed the opportunity to see that rare flower. There's a boat in the canal behind them, with a rocket on top. The Pizza Planet truck from this movie is a curiosity, but you realize if one looks closely at the conceptual art. In the background, there is a fire alarm. Just a small detail that shows the history of this fire-phobic city. There is also a sign to join the space club with a planet with tentacles. In this case, it is a nod to Pixar's upcoming release called Elio. At the beginning, during the presentation of the elements, we can see the air element represented by different types of clouds. There's one type in particular, the pink clouds, which we can also see better in the movie's teaser that was released last year. We already knew these pink clouds, as we saw them in a Disney animated short by Pixar called Partly Cloudy, where these clouds created babies or pets that were then delivered by storks all over the world. This could suggest that what happened in this animated short might have taken place in the same location, indicating that Elemental and Partly Cloudy share the same universe. We know that Wade is water and if he is hit, water is supposed to come out. This scene was very strange for some because they have indicated that the image looks a bit weird, and that this can be a hidden or subliminal message. I don't know, you judge. Let me know what other details you noticed from this movie. Do you think animated movies consciously present seemingly hidden messages, or do you think it's just a coincidence? Leave your comment here. Remember to subscribe to this channel so you can get information about your favorite movies and series.